We are going to set catfish jug lines right now. We're going to try and catch us some catfish because uh, later tonight for dinner, we're going to be cooking a sauce piquant uh, and using that catfish filet in that dish. Where well, I want this? Where well, I want this for that fat cat? All right. Where we can see it. There you go, Pop. Stop going that, Mr. Catfish. We got some fresh cut bacon from Rouse's here. It's actually a turkey, Cajun style turkey bacon, which uh, is new for me, but it seems pretty good, smells good. And we're gonna add some eggs after this. And we got some biscuits in the oven, just a simple little meal to keep these guys going. Oh boy, they went way over there to go get them. We got catfish right here. Let's go get us a fat cat. Another one. Sweet meat. And we kept the gizzy. Get him back out there, Bob. Get just another one. All right. Nice size cat. Perfect. And what we're going to do? We got another catfish ahead. Is just cut the tail so we want to bleed him. All the way off, you can see that right through the vein, right into it. <laughs> he got the last laugh, didn't he? <laughs> <laughs> hey, we got another catfish on. Woo! It's another nice one. All right, let's try this again. With a pair of good shears or a sharp knife, just cut that tail all the way through. See, he's just draining blood. That's gonna get all that bloodline out right into some ice cold water. Since I'm gonna learn my lesson, I'm going. Well played. <laughs> well played. <laughs> That's a good luck gizzard right there. Oh yeah, but we gotta unhook that. Just hold the dock. Hold the dock. Wait for the next one. You didn't burn too much gas. Uh-uh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna change the oil now. <laughs> See what size y'all got? Y'all, y'all two fit in that little ice chest? <laughs> oh boy, look, he saw you, boy, he wants you. While the crew gets these catfish on ice, Sean and I make a run to the marina to pick up our buddy Michael Collins. Michael is the accordion player for the Zydeco band Nock New and the Wild Matus, and he'll be dropping into the duck camp for a couple days to talk music, catch and cook some food, and of course do a little cutting up. Do you always play the accordion? No. <laughs> we all played heavy metal. Uh, we all played uh, like slip, like like heavy music. And then uh, they're like, let's start a Zydeco band. Just for jokes, you know, just to get away and do something. We never wrote music before. And we just sat around, drank, wrote songs. Branch was a washboard player because he didn't know how to play any instruments. Lace bought an accordion, tried to learn how to play. Cody was playing bass, I was playing guitar. And then I went to accordion, Lace went to drums, and Philip went to guitar. So people know me as the accordion player now. Every, every Zydeco band around here has uh, like a harsh trahan Zydeco playboys. And something, something, and the something, something. And so we came up with Nonk New in the Wild My Twos, and there's no Nonk New. It's just a name that we, we came up with, and it means uh, Uncle Naked in the Wild Male Cats. 
it was a joke. You know, we didn't ever thought the name would take off or do anything. If the soul of Louisiana can be found in its cuisine, then its music is where you can find its pulse. It doesn't matter if you're at the duck camp or working the rigs offshore, it seems that music finds its way into every nook of Louisiana life. The luxury of what we have out here is we're not the only people out here. So many different people out here do the same thing. The good thing is it's just a quick boat ride away. We came to our buddy Spencer's and Kyle's duck camp, floating little houseboat out here. We got fries, some seafood, we got some frog legs, catfish, soft shell crabs. It's starting to drizzle a little bit, but that won't stop the party because the grease is getting hot, the seafood's fresh, and we're about to eat good. Oh, yeah, man, that's fried daddy right there. Fried daddy, that's fried daddy. Yeah, man, so we've been having a camp here, um, buddy Kyle's place. Come on here as often as we can. We uh, always had the dance floor here, and then we added the top, which made it real nice. You know, every time we come out, we had a table, we had this, we had that, and it just makes it more and more comfortable. We try to come out here and make some more memories every chance we can get. All that diesel generators the tick, you know? Yeah, it's quiet, huh? We got a gas and we're screaming over. What you put on your shrimp? Uh, I'm, I'm putting mustard and mayonnaise. Yeah, mustard and mayonnaise? Yeah. We came out here one night and we didn't have any milk, we didn't have any eggs, we caught a ton of catfish. So we're digging in the, the cabinet and we're like, Dude, what are we gonna fry all these battering with? We had nothing but mayonnaise everywhere. It's like, what's, what's mayonnaise made out of? Eggs. I'm like, Let's do it. Let's mayonnaise, try, mustard, man. a little hot sauce if they got some in and there. Some fish fry. Fish fry. I like it. I never heard of putting mayonnaise with shrimp or any fried seafood, but I'm already a believer. And this is what I love about checking out what other people are doing. Different duck camps, different houses, whatever you're doing, it's always something to learn. And then this little mayonnaise batter with this corn flour, I think it's gonna be really good. So I'm, I'm personally, personally excited about it and I'm already planning on stealing it for every other fried seafood thing that I do in the future. So we're gonna drop them in two minutes, that's it. Do not want to overfry shrimp ever. That's golden right there. That mayonnaise makes that it's color, huh? Do you know how when you put mayonnaise on the bread and you toast it? That's what I do with my grilled cheeses. I spread mayonnaise, yep. mayonnaise on my bread. That's the trick. That's the trick. Started the weekend, we headed to the camp. They swarming now. Like, you like pool do over there, bro. <laughs> it's delicious, bro. Kind of know what you're doing, bro. Yeah, man. Nah, we fried daddy. Fried daddy. That's good, bro. Go frogging with Jesse. You better pack a lunch. You ain't coming back till the sun's coming up. Till the frogs go back home. The idea of eating an entire blue crab might seem daunting to some, but preparing them for the grease is actually pretty straightforward. The crab is going through its molting cycle, which means its hard shell has been traded in for a shiny, new, and more importantly, delicious but soft shell. The only thing you have to do is remove the face, the flap on the underside of its abdomen, and the lungs hiding underneath the top shell. So I went ahead and made a little kind of wet batter dredge out of yellow mustard, distilled vinegar, and a little beer. And then I'm gonna take the soft shell crab, just swipe it through, then right into this seasoned corn flour and into the hot grease. That tastes good. I know those are good. Oh, flour is good. So uh, all I gotta do is not mess it up. We'll see what happens. He So the 
crabs came out great. I'm not sure why I ever doubted it, because when you start with great ingredients, it will yield great food. So this looks beautiful. Look at that super select crab. All that mustard in the middle, nice and crispy all around. Just tear that. Mm. It really doesn't get any better than that. Soft-shell crab is one of my favorite fried seafoods of all time. We ain't not gonna <laughs> let that go to waste. That's it from the Bluebird Camp. Man, they fried up some awesome catfish, shrimp, frog legs, and we fried some soft shell crab. But sun's going down, night's not over. We gotta go back to the camp. Junior's cooking a, what are you cooking, Junior? Sauce pecan. Catfish sauce pecan. See y'all a little bit. We'll see y'all later. If there is one person I trust to put up a soulful pot of Cajun cooking, it's Junior. And tonight, dinner is on him. So tonight, I'm gonna be cooking a catfish sauce piquant. And like most dishes from Louisiana, they all start with a good roux. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started with that. Get that grease hot, and you throw that fly in there, and you cook it hot at first. You just wanna keep stirring and stirring until it gets to the color that you like. You put a lot of love, sweat, and tears into food whenever you cook Cajun food. Uh, a lot of it takes a long time. It's, you know, a lot of patience and, uh, you know, just stirring that pot. And uh, I think that's what I really like about it, you know. I'm, I'm actually an impatient person, but when it comes to cooking, I just love doing it. So I think it's been about 30, 45 minutes since we added the oil and the flour and kind of been cooking this down. And I'd say, as dark as we want it, by the end of this paddle, we're gonna be here for another 30, 45 minutes stirring this roux. Sauce pecan directly translates to spicy sauce, but that description alone does not do this dish justice. Oh. <laughs> Using a roux, tomatoes, peppers, and spices, this Cajun-style stew is cooked throughout the state using everything from catfish to alligator and venison to rabbit. So we uh, ended up setting some jug lines out this, this morning and uh, we caught quite a few catfish. We're gonna cube up the meat and that's gonna be the final protein that we're putting into this sauce pecan. Being able to catch your own food to cook is just one of the greatest things to me. In true Louisiana fashion, when dinner is ready, folks show up. The boys from the Bluebird camp join us on the front deck of Hoboville to share a meal. Historically, eggs likely found their place into these Cajun dishes to help stretch the amount of protein that was in each particular recipe. Obviously, with the amount of catfish we caught, protein is not an issue, but boiled eggs are always a welcome addition to a camp-cooked sauce pecan. This fish will fall apart real quick on you, so you just want to lightly fold it in. And once it's cooked, you're ready to serve. It should only take a few minutes. And that's looking right where we want it to be. All right, everything is done. The traditional way to serve this dish, you take a nice healthy portion of your sauce with your fresh fish, get you a little egg, a scoop of corn, and a little garnish to finish it off. And that's a wrap. Get that egg, huh? You know, Junior's a hell of a cook, so when he said he wanted to make a sauce pecan, I knew we were in good hands for dinner tonight, and he did not disappoint. It is perfect. I love this dish because it's spicy, it's homey, it's got that bite, it's got everything nice. It's a perfect duck camp dinner. Mike Collins and I are actually fraternity brothers from Nickel State, but I didn't really realize how much music he was into until he actually came to the camp. Him and Spencer, they, they, them going two together was pretty amazing to watch. That was actually one of the nights that I'll never forget at this camp. All right, you ready? I tried to play the accordion, but I, it wasn't my best shot. Straight downhill from here. Yeah. 
<laughs> Ain't no coming back from this. All right, hit it. Hit it. You gotta hit it. I'm following your lead. A lead. Go, go with it. For everyone's sake, we're going to shut things down here and get ready for a hunt in the morning. Sunday morning, it's about 45, 50 degrees, but we got some rain coming in. So what we're hoping for is some early birds, knock, knock a few of them down, maybe our limits, and then head back to the camp before we get too rained on. But shoot, we like hunting in this weather. This overcast, breezy, little rain, light rain, that's really how we like to hunt here in South Louisiana on this lease. So see what we can do. Lucky right now. Finally enough bluebird. It's the first non-bluebird day this year. Last Sunday we had a little bit of cover, but it did not last long. Now we just need to have the ducks. I mean, I don't see nothing in the sky. Breakfast of champs right here, MRE. Mm -mm -mm. The finest cheese tortellini that the U.S. government can provide. Best part of a hurricane is in Maurice. It's a silver lining if I ever heard. Mm -hmm. There's a group of there's groups of grays all over the place here, but they know exactly where we're at. Control all delete. <laughs> Nice hearing other people shoot. Yeah, it's encouraging. Glad right? somebody's doing something. There's birds around us now. <laughs> Try him. Try him, Jay. Nice. I like Gatorade, but it's just too much. So I do like a one third Gatorade, two thirds water. I cut. I cut a lot of stuff. I even cut my chocolate milk with like skim milk. I'm telling you, boy. <laughs> he cutting his chocolate move, boy. He don't cut the move. He don't cut the move. <laughs> he drink that stuff thick and chocolatey. <laughs> cut the move, bro. You can't cut the move. Well, bring that out. Let's let's drink that. You can't cut it though. What am I gonna cut it with? That's a gray duck right here. Got on. That make it all worth it right there. <laughs> all right, I think that's gonna do it for this hunt. It wasn't as productive as um, yesterday when the guys hunted, but we ended up putting a little pile of birds on the water, plus beautiful gray duck that uh, came right into the decoys, which was really a highlight of my day. But Jay's gotta get started on a seafood gumbo at the camp. I'm hungry, I wanna get out of this rain. That was the first one in the morning right there. Nice ring night. Is that a merganza? Merganza, huh? The old hen ringer. Whew. Big old head on him, huh? 
we see a lot of gray ducks are, are gadwalls uh, here at the lease and um, we try to call them call at them we hunt them but usually they're they're pretty timid around us and they know exactly where the kind of brush piles are so you know a big duck is really nice to see um, among all the ring necks and teal and so on and plus it responded to the calls it circled the blind it came right into the deeks and set up for a clean kill and it's just a really special bird to have this morning because it was a slow hunt it was raining you you had to you had to want it to come out here today and really this bird made it all worth it It's the last full day in the swamps, and that seafood gumbo and grilled oysters are going to hit just right. Me and the crew are going to chill out and gear up as we prepare to take this show down the road for an epic meat haul to Venice, Louisiana. On the next episode of Duck Camp Dinners, we eat the best fish in the Gulf. Ducks get thick, and Jay has to suck it up. Suck it up, Jay. What'd I do wrong, bro? <laughs> Shoot straight and come hungry.